Now that we know the expected behavior, let's talk about how do we troubleshoot file issues in person-to-person -person chats. First of all, what are some of the common issues that you might hear with person-to-person -person file sharing? First one, a user cannot upload a file to a chat. You might also get either a user cannot access a file in a chat or a user cannot access a file in a chat, but others can, which makes it even more interesting. Lastly, a common one is that a file from a chat was previously accessible, but it isn't anymore. Now, how do we troubleshoot? There are three main pieces of information that you need. First of all, who shared the file? Who is the sender? After that, who is the user or the users who cannot access the file? And finally, a good piece of information to have is the receiver internal or external? So is it just an external user who cannot access files or is it internal as well? As that can really help you focus on the right settings right away. The easiest way to get a lot of the information is to simply ask them to go in the chat and copy the link to the file that they cannot access. By looking at the URL, you will see right away if the file is in SharePoint or in OneDrive for Business, as well as the path to the file. So you can go in and check if the file exists, and if it does, check the permissions. Now, if you try that and then the item was deleted, you might get an error such as this one. And I've seen this happen a lot of times when collaboration is done via chat, but the original sender leaves the organization and their OneDrive for Business files are deleted or migrated to another user's OneDrive for Business during the offboarding process. Okay, so now if we look at some common causes, the one that happens most of the time is that a user was added to a chat after the file was shared. This happens because when a sender uploads a file, that file is shared by default with people in the chat at that moment in time. If a user is added after, those files are not updated automatically. Now, Team does warn you about this as a user, but users often forget and still open tickets about it. The other most common configuration issue that I have seen, and this impacts mostly external users, is that the external sharing settings in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business don't match those of Microsoft Teams. Teams, SharePoint, and OneDrive for Business can all have different configurations from if external sharing is enabled or not, or even the allowed and blocked domains, and without those being in sync, file access errors can happen. Now that we have seen the theory, let's head over to the lab and see how we can troubleshoot file issues in person-to-person -person chats. We are now in the demo environment. Let me open up the browser where I'm logged in as Vanessa Lee and let's start with a chat with John Smith here. Let me just go and upload a document here. I will just go, let's go in here, let's go in the demos folder and we will pick this PowerPoint file and let me just add some text here. I'll do hello John and then I will change the permissions. What I will do here, I'll just do specific people, I'll take John Smith off, so I'll kind of do it on purpose to break it. Let's only leave Vanessa Lee in there, click on apply, and then, as you can see, Teams is really smart. It gave me, again, another warning. The recipient does not have permissions to access this file. I will still send it. Now, if I go to John Smith here, I will click on the file, and I will get an error. So how do we troubleshoot this? A user tries to access a file, but gets an error in Teams. The best thing you can do is ask the sending user to go here and copy the link. I will copy the link here and let's actually put it in Notepad. So we can take a look at what the link looks like and I will zoom in a tiny bit. So we can see that my link after the company name I have a dash my, which already tells me this is in OneDrive for Business. Because remember, the link could have also come from a SharePoint site, in which case we would see slash site slash 
at the end and we would not see the dash my. And then I have the personal, which again tells me it's one drive for business. And then I know it's in Vanessa Lee Globalmantics.org OneDrive. So I already know exactly where the file X at, whose OneDrive for business X in. Of course, as an admin, I might not have access to that user's OneDrive for business. However, there are multiple ways I can do it. First of all, from the SharePoint Admin Center, I could go into more features. I could go into user profiles here, manage user profiles, search for the user, which would bring me over here. I already prepared it. And then I can go in the more options, manage site collections owner, and then add myself as a site collection administrator. So then I would have access to that site. Another option, if you don't already have access to the site, from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you could go find that user. At the end, you have a OneDrive tab. And then again, if you don't have access, you have here, get access to files, and you would have a create a link where you as an admin could go in and see Vanessa Lee's files. Okay, so Vlad should have access to Vanessa Lee OneDrive for Business. What I can do here, I can go to the account name, click on manage personal site, which will actually kind of bring me to Vanessa Lee OneDrive for Business. I can then go to documents, Microsoft Teams chat files. I see that the file here just got uploaded. I can go into sharing and then I can see, okay, John Smith does not have access here. And then I could either modify it myself or even better train Vanessa on how to do it so the error doesn't happen again. So this is the easiest way and this is how you can actually use that link. It's important that you ask the sending user to actually copy the link and not the receiving user. So again, you need to work with the sending user, the person that sent the document to get this information. Because if not, if I go as John Smith over here, no, here is John Smith. I'll go back to the chat. If I try to copy the link, I'll probably get an error. You can't copy the link because you don't have access to the file. But now if I go in, let me go in back as Vlad. Again, I'm a site collection administrator. I will delete the file. If the sending user, so Vanessa here, cannot copy the link, copy link here, it's probably because the file was deleted and doesn't exist anymore. You see, if I delete it from the sending user, even the sending user doesn't have access to that link anymore. Okay, so this is, again, how you can use the link to find where the file is, as well as how to grant yourself access to the sending users, OneDrive for Business, and to go check if the file exists. The other problem can happen if we have an external user. Again, I'm logged in as Vanessa, and I will go to this conversation where I have John Smith as well as Vlad Catrinescu, but my guest account. So remember, a guest account means that the user comes from another tenant. So what I will do here, I will do, here's the PowerPoint file. Let me go attach files here. I will upload from my computer again. Let's select this one and let's wait for it to upload. I'll leave it by default. People in this chat with the link can view. I will send a file. Now, if I go as John Smith here, everything should be good. I should be able to access the file. No problems at all. There we go. However, if I go as Vlad here in the guest account, I will click on the same file and I have an error. You don't have access to this file. However, Vanessa did everything right. This can be because of the OneDrive for Business external sharing settings. So how do we check that? We go back to the SharePoint Online Admin Center. Under policies, we go on sharing. And here we can see all of the different external sharing settings for SharePoint and OneDrive for Business. So let me minimize the menu and zoom in a tiny bit so we can see everything properly. After that, you see right now, neither SharePoint or OneDrive can share externally. I can, of course, modify it. Remember, OneDrive for Business cannot be more permissive than SharePoint. So I cannot have, for example, 
SharePoint at new and existing guests and OneDrive at anyone. It doesn't work. So really, I need to make sure that OneDrive for Business can share externally. And depending on how advanced your configuration is, you might have limit external sharing by domain, which might further block what domains we can actually send this to. So if those configurations are off, you really need to talk with the person that's managing Microsoft Teams and really work on a decision at a company level on how you want to manage Teams guests. Because again, Teams, SharePoint, and OneDrive for Business can all have different external sharing settings. And if they're not in sync, like it was the case here where I can have a guest, but that guest cannot access files, you might run into a bunch of errors. So it's really important that you work with all of your admins in the organization to make sure that the settings, whether it's what users can have access or down to what domains are on your allow and block list, make sure that they are all in sync. So after you save it, the file might need to be reshared. So let's just save it here with new and existing guests. I will click on save. And after that, let's go back in as Vlad. Let me go back in the chat here. Let's try to open the file. It didn't work because it was not actually able to share the file then. So Vanessa might need to go in, change the properties to that file, add Vlad. Also remember, when we want to add another user, let me go here as Vanessa, let's add a person, let's add Patrick Delano here to the chat. I will click on add. The actual permissions to the file will not be changed. So again, as Vanessa, you might need to go in, copy the link, go in OneDrive for Business, and make sure that Patrick and now Vlad, the guest account, have access to that file. But really, the troubleshooting techniques for file issues in person-to-person -person checks, get the sending user to give you the link to the file. From there, you can go to the file, check the permissions as an admin here. Now we should actually see the new file here. We can go check the permissions and see why the receiving user cannot access it.